watching Behind the News at TAC TV. I am Halima Sadia. American Indians and Indo-Canadians are quite concerned over this rising systematic Hindu phobia in the US, Canada and rest of the world. The World Hindu Council of America, American Hindus Against Defamation and Dharma Civilization Foundation is arranging a monthly webinar in order to create an awareness of rising systematic Hindu phobia in USA, Canada and worldwide. Hindu organizations claim that Hindu phobia is quite evident in mainstream media, academia, political parties of right and left both sides. Media, academics and extreme left activists are creating a fear of Hindutva in context Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. In fact, Hinduism and Hindutva are synonymous. According to Hindutva, the purpose of life is fourfolded to achieve Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. The Hindutva teachings are from Dharma to Moksha, means to act virtuously and righteously with deep sense of self-realization. Enlightenment or unity with God, the Hindutva has never taught violence, intolerance or any armed conflict as opposed to some ideologies. <music>
Right. So the Hindu diaspora in the uh, United States is about 4 million strong. Uh, now, if you include uh, Buddhists, uh, Jains, and other dharmic communities, and if you then add the indigenous American population who are strongly influenced by Hindu ideology, uh, the numbers can run as high as 20 to 30 uh, million people. The majority of the immigrant Hindus uh, came to America in the last 50 to 55 years. Uh, started uh, with the uh, Immigration Act of 1965. Uh, in these last 50 to 55 years, uh, Hindus have become an integral part of the uh, fabric of the American society and uh, have contributed heavily uh, to the society. Um, I'd like to uh, share some important statistics with you to share my, to, to illustrate my point. Um, Hindus are the most educated immigrant community in America today by a large margin. Even though they represent only about 1% of the total American population, 5% of the American physicians are from the Hindu community. Um, if you look at the hospitality industry, 50% of the low to medium end of the hospitality industry is owned and managed by Hindus. And they are the backbone of the IT industry in America. Uh, if you look at the startups, technology startups that came up during the first decade of this century, 25% of them had at least one Hindu as a partner. And collectively, the Hindu community generates about $1 trillion. This is trillion with a T per year and contributes to the US GDP. And that represents 5% of the United States GDP. So recently, your organization has been organizing a series of webinars in order to educate the public on the rise of phenomena that you are calling Hindu Devisha. Is it same as Hindu phobia or something different than that? Yeah, so this requires a little bit of a lengthy explanation. Um, so uh, if you will bear with me. Uh, yes, first of all, to be technically accurate, uh, this webinar series has been jointly sponsored by my organization, the World Hindu Council of America, and uh, a Dharma Civilization Foundation. Now to the crux of your question, that is, uh, what exactly is this phenomenon that we're calling Hindu vision? As I said earlier, a majority of Hindu immigrants came to America in the last 50 to 55 years. The story is probably not very different from Canada either. Uh, I think uh, roughly the uh, you know the the Hindus started coming to Canada roughly at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now during this period, we have been slowly integrating ourselves into uh, the American society, while we've been building a you know financial foundation for our families. And uh, to be honest, uh, we've been generally received very well uh, by our adopted countries. This is not to say that we have not faced some challenges along the way. Um, many of us who lived in Canada in, uh, you know, in 1970s will recall that there was something called a Paki movement against the, uh, you know, against the Asians and against, against Indians and, and Pakistanis for that matter. In the United States, we had something called a Dotbuster movement that took place in 1980s and it became somewhat violent at times. Uh, also, there have been a lot of derisive comments about our way of life, about our food, about our clothes, some attacks on our um, temples and so on and so forth. But, you know, we've generally treated these things as uh, rites of passage. Over time, the strangeness on both sides began to wear off and uh, we learned to, to live with each other's idiosyncrasies. In other words, we reached a sort of a social equilibrium, uh, a way to be able to live together in the society. Now this social equi equilibrium began to shift in the last 10 years or so, and particularly in the last five to six years. Uh, we started to see a phenomenon uh, from certain domains. For instance, we started to receive unwarranted attacks on our deities, our cultural and religious symbols, 
our festivals, caste issues began to rear their ugly head in the social media. News media became decidedly hostile to Hindu way of life. So of course, we've been looking for a proper word to describe this ambience of denigration, repulsion, and hate. Uh, since Islamophobia has been commonly used uh, in the media for long, some time, many Hindus try to call this phenomenon as Hinduphobia. Uh, however, we don't think Hinduphobia is a proper way to describe it. See, phobia is a Greek word meaning fear of something. Well, what is there to fear of, of Hindus? They have not tried to convert anyone by force. They have not taken over any foreign land by force. They are not responsible for mass killing of any society. They have not driven any planes into tall buildings, nor have they tried to blow up Times Squares with uh, propane tanks, nor have they taken part in Boston bombings or send their children to fight with ISIS. In fact, Hindu Americans have been called an ideal community because they're extremely law abiding and cause absolutely no trouble in the societies that they live in. So, so we felt Hindu phobia is not the right term for us. Instead, we have picked Dvesha, which is a Sanskrit word meaning hate, repulsion, and denigration. Exactly the kind of experiences that we have been having. Hence the word Hindu Dvesha. Now, we realize that this word does not roll off the tongue easily. So, and, and that is especially true for non-Hindus, those who are not familiar with Sanskrit terms. So we are using it along with the word Hinduphobia for, for now, just to improve its familiarity with our audience. Okay, so how do you see, or how do you currently experience Hindu Dvesha in USA? How would you comment on that? Yes, so um, we are experiencing Hindu Dvesha in many ways. Uh, uh, to make it a little bit easier to describe, let me talk about Hindu Dvesha in five different categories or domains. So let me start with academia. Now this is not a new phenomenon. In fact, there is a field of study in, uh, in humanities called Indology. This field got its start in early 1800s in Britain and spread to Europe and from there to the Americas. There are many professors in highly prestigious universities today who have made it their business to write highly critical, insulting and derisive books and articles about our scriptures, about our culture, about our social practices and our way of life. Much of it is ill-informed, shows lack of scholarship and serves no purpose other than to garner hefty stipends from certain deep-pocketed sponsors. The second category is the entertainment industry. Now, for a long time, uh, the movies, both from Hollywood as well as Bollywood, have been depicting Hindu characters in bad light. Um, they are shown either as clownish or moronic or hypocrites or cruel and criminal. This has now spread to streaming services and has become even more noticeable. The third category is uh, news media. Now, I have to say that traditionally, uh, news media in the West has been uh, somewhat negative to neutral um, on issues related to Hindus. However, in the last few years, it has decidedly turned biased and mean against the Hindus. Uh, for instance, uh, if you pick New York Times or Washington Post for the last five years, you will hardly find an article that can be considered well-balanced from the Hindu point of view. The fourth category is social media. Well, what can I say about social media? It's a jungle out there. Everyone seems to feel empowered to say anything on any subject, uh, whether they know anything about it or not. In today's world, it's uh, not that easy to ignore it because it does affect how people perceive you. Uh, unfortunately for Hindus, there are certain well-organized and social media savvy organizations which have been flooding this particular communication channel uh, with hateful messages against the Hindu community. 
Um, the fifth category is uh, organized syndicates. I alluded to this uh, category a little bit earlier in, uh, during, uh, in, during my uh, conversation on social media. However, social media is, an art, not, is not all that they do. Uh, they are also publishing bogus research reports trying to show Hindus as socially oppressive and, uh, and they are being sponsored by big money and have garnered a lot of influence in the corridors of power and political circles. So what is the historical origin of Hindu Dvesha? So Hindu Dvesha phenomenon is deeply rooted in the colonial history of India. In the late 1700s and early 1800s, uh, British colonizers were slowly gaining ground and subjugating larger and larger parts of India. In order to rule over such a diverse group of people with unfamiliar beliefs, social and cultural practices, it became imperative for them to describe and categorize them and understand them. Um, and of course, they had to use their own Western and Christian lens to do that. So this led to the creation of a new discipline of study called the Oriental Studies, which then over time morphed into uh, what's, what's now called Western Indology. As these Indologists try to fit Hindu ideas and practices into the Christian framework, they found the task to be nearly impossible. Therefore, anything that they did not seem to f uh, be able to fit into their framework became an issue to be called crude, superstitious, ungodly, stupid, and other names simply too crude to be mentioned here. Um, eventually, Indology became a field where the only occupation became to write more and more insulting articles and books each Indologist trying to outdo the other in the level of derision of the Hindu practices. This actually suited the purpose of the colonizers because uh, they could easily point to these works and say, well, you know, these Hindus are uncivilized, their religion is nothing but a bunch of superstitions, and their society is doomed unless someone takes up the job of civilizing them. Mm -hmm. And who better equipped to do this than the spirit race of the British government. So today this colonial period is over, but the Western Indology continues to live on. The role of the colonizer has been replaced by the vested interests of the Christian missionaries and leftist forces who want to weaken the social structure for their own nefarious purposes. So what are the factors which are contributing to modern day Hindu Dvesha in your opinion? Um, the historical factors that I just mentioned still continue to pay, play a big role, of course. But what is new in the last few years, I believe, is the change in the political landscape of India. One thing that most people in the West do not realize is that even though the British colonizers left India in 1947, the new political rulers of so-called free India had all been trained by British education system. They were only Indians in their looks. Inside, they were as English as their British educators. Not only that, they had also learned the technique of divide and rule from their colonial masters. They used their lessons well to garner and keep the reins of political power in their hands for almost 70 years. During this period, the Hindu society got treated like a stepchild. In terms of their political power, Hindus could hardly tell the difference between the colonial period and the so-called free India. All that began to change as the political winds shifted in India. Suddenly, the Hindu society began to realize that they also had rights that they had been fed bald-faced lies about their history, and they began to feel the beginnings of a Hindu cultural renaissance. On the world stage, this phenomenon got translated into now-hated word called Hindutva. Of course, this doesn't sit well with a lot of Western interests. 
Firstly, the political privileged class in India, which had been feeding off the gravy train for the last 70 years, suddenly began to feel their shenanigans were, uh, that their shenanigans were under a microscope. Secondly, the world at large, especially the Western world, had developed some really bad social habits during the colonial period. They had gotten used to the idea of being able to tell India and Indians how they should be conducting their business. In other words, they felt it was their God-given right to tell Indians what to do. And they became comfortable with the idea of India as a docile and a supplicant partner on the world stage. Unfortunately for them, the new political regime in India has its own ideas of how to manage their affairs. Naturally, it threatens all those people who feel it as their God-given right to offer their opinions on anything Indian. And of course, when they don't like something, they try to put it down as nasty, cruel, unbecoming, uncivilized. Uh, the end result is a cacophony of anti-Hindu narrative in the news media, in social media, and all the other domains that I mentioned earlier. So apart from educating the society, what other steps are you taking to fight this trend? So education is the highest priority right now. Um, raising awareness is the, is the biggest issue. Um, we are doing our best to expand our network, not only within the Hindu community, but also among, among uh, non-Hindu groups. Uh, we are looking to create an active network of volunteers who would be dedicated to monitoring various media channels. For instance, the objective is to comprehensively record and, uh, and report incidents of uh, Hindu dvesha in various media. And uh, we believe that documenting and daylighting this abject media bias against Hindus will help open many eyes in the corridors of power. So is your organization reaching out to politicians, policymakers, media, law enforcement agencies to eliminate this curse? Uh, so this is uh, a work in progress. Um, we have had a low level of UPC effort uh, going a long time. Uh, however, we know that we need to kick it into high gear. So let's note that we are a relatively new uh, immigrant community. Up to this time, our top priority has been to integrate ourselves into our adopted society and build a secure financial base and uh, make a strong contribution to the society, build reputation as professionals, business leaders, entrepreneurs, educators, and so on and so forth. Now, we have built a great reputation for being an ideal community that knows how to make strong contribution to society in all kinds of fields and live as good neighbors and co-workers. We have always believed, perhaps naively, that uh, being good is going to be good enough. As such, political activism has not been a big priority for us until now. Uh, of course, uh, Hindu American community is not without resources. Our goal is to put our social and material resources towards building not only a strong contributing community, but also a socially and politically well-connected community as well. So what would you suggest our viewers to work with your group in order to help curb Hindu Devisha? Um, a very good question. Education and awareness are key goals in the short term. Uh, we want not only Hindu diaspora to become fully aware of what is happening to them, but go to the world at large to know what we are experiencing. Your viewers can do this by simply participating in our free monthly webinars. The next one is on February 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern. We will be live streaming it through a variety of public channels, including your TV channel, if you would be so kind as to carry it for us. Uh, we would like... Uh, those people who agree with our cause to support us in fighting this disease. Uh, they can do this in a number of ways. They can give us moral support simply by writing to us uh, at admin at vhpa.org. I'll give it to you separately so you can display it on your mm -hmm. screen. For sure. Uh, they can spread the word 
about the webinar series through their social networks so that more people become aware of what we are doing. Those who are somewhat uh, media savvy, they can join us in monitoring the news and other media and help us produce periodic um, Hindu Dvesha incidents. And finally, of course, the financial support is always welcome. Anyone who is interested in supporting us in any of the ways that I just mentioned, please write to us at admin at bhpanj.org. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us and sharing so uh, knowledgeable things with us today. Thank you very much for watching Behind the News with Halima Sadia at TAG TV today.